Okay, hello. I'm uh, Rafael Luna, and I'm teaching the housing hybrid studio at the Rhode Island School of Design. And we're also looking at the Pingo Market in the, the A area, Site 5. Um, we're taking the approach more of uh, interior urbanism as the theme of the studio and looking how we can generate urban renewal through adapted reuse. Uh, this coming from a trend uh, that's, that's been occurring and uh, we can see international competitions happening in Seoul, Seoul Sangha, uh, which uh, Peter mentioned uh, before, um, the kind of like the Seoul Highline version uh, by MVRDV. Uh, so we're following this trend of, of uh, seeing if through adaptive reuse of these mega structures we can uh, revamp areas and intensify them. Um, I actually kept this this uh, paragraph from uh, an original brief that was sent to us uh, some months ago, uh, which I'm sure it's uh, changed by now, but uh, I still found it interesting because it condensed everything into this one single paragraph of the city as a place of making, sensing, recycling, connecting, and archiving therefore can be thought of as a new kind of commons that has spatial consequences transversely connected to social and political reforms. And the reason why I kept this one and I like it and I'm trying to frame the studio in this way is because it makes me ask, uh, can a building be operative to the urban fabric? So if we're framing this studio within the theme of interior urbanism, how can the uh, an interior aspect of a building have a, a greater relation to the urban fabric uh, so I believe it can be operative, uh, it can operate within an industry or for an industry, as well as it can operate as an infrastructure in the urban fabric. Um, either or, these would work as new typologies that form hybrid buildings uh, within the urban fabric. So if we start talking in, uh, in the subject of, of trying to frame it through an industry, then we start thinking of what could be that industry that puts uh, Seoul within the world stage. If we look at the immediate context, uh, of course this is a wholesale retailer right now, but it is within this idea of a fashion plaza. Uh, we can look at that industry of uh, fashion, for example. Uh, we can look at a bigger context uh, of, of Seoul as in, in general, which has been pushing uh, not just fashion, but design. Uh, we, we know from the World Design Capital 2010 when, they, when it was won uh, to up to why we are here today. Uh, you know, this, this push in design uh, as a city. So, if we look at fashion, it's still within its infancy. It's uh, it's it's almost dwarfed by all the other industries that that uh, generate most of the GDP in in Seoul. It only stands for 2.3 percent of the total GDP. Um, again, looking at the immediate context of of the wholesalers, uh, we start thinking of this term fashion. What is a fashionable industry? Uh, or fashionless, how can we look at this as an industry as well? If we think of generating new urban cores within the city, how do we intensify the urban cores and we compare, for example, other retail cores? Uh, this is mapping all at the same scale. Uh, they're too dark, but anyway. Um, different retail cores around Seoul where we can overlay the Pyongyang market on top of each of these cores, and it's almost a similar scale within all of the main streets in all of these retail cores, but they all have their own very specific scales, their own very specific characters, their own very specific typology, so it's not like we're going to compete amongst retail cores. We cannot bring uh, high-end retail boutiques from Apuyong into Dong Demon area, for example. Uh, we still need to understand also the immediate context of Dong Demon being developed as this uh, almost generating these big box develop, uh, department stores all throughout the neighborhood of the Pyongyang uh, clothing market, uh, which makes out the market stand out as the only singular 
building that doesn't follow this this trend of sort of stacking department stored environments, which is a very introvert uh, version of a building. Uh, it's it's almost following still the metropolitan architecture uh, theories uh, rather than uh, pushing the agenda of, of of interior urbanism of how to extrovert the building. So we talked also uh, about the next industrial revolution, which was brought up. Uh, can we revolutionize uh, or revamp an industry, the hybrid industry? Can we take, for example, top industries uh, that generate the most of the GDP in, in Korea or Seoul? For example, the tech industry, which does have a global presence, does have a global uh, market. Uh, with emergent industries, for example, design, or fashion, um, how through merging these we can start changing the localized environments of something that was, for example, the brand environments to now operative environments that start speaking about the urban scale and the urban context. And in a way brings Seoul to the world stage, not as a competition of, of uh, staying within what could be designed as fashion design, uh, with couture houses of you know London, Milan, Paris, New York, but in a way by hybridizing these industries, it doesn't compete with these cities and it doesn't think of itself as this way, but it actually thinks of itself more in this way. What are the new technologies? Um, and it's not competing with global cities, again, like London, New York, Paris, and Tokyo, although it can, but actually, uh, interestingly enough, with cities like Boston, for example, that uh, have global headquarters of uh, Puma, New Balance, um, Reeboks, Coney, and they pick these cities because of institutions, for example, MIT and Harvard, where they can merge research and development and technologies with industries of garments and fabrics um, in order to revolutionize the industry into what would be the new forms of production in the city. Uh, again, new. Uh, this is from the MIT Media Lab, um, which I don't know if uh, John, you have one of these or not, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So again, we can start revolutionizing um, revolutionizing industries when we start thinking about the way that we're going to live in the future, where uh, it's not about fashion design and couture, but maybe operative. Um, just like there's opera buildings, opera bit, operative uh, clothing, operative ways of living. Uh, so this was generated at the MIT Media Lab, which is uh, fashion with microorganisms, where the microorganisms grow and they evolve around you and they can actually produce enzymes. So for example, uh, an applicable way of using this is if you're diabetic, the microorganisms can produce, en produce enzymes so that you don't have to keep on injecting yourself, um, but actually the clothing operates on you and it can grow on you and we can look at these sort of things. So Seoul has the capacity and it has the resources of, for example, again, the tech industry, research and development. We can merge it with um, other growing industries to produce something new that makes it stand out at a global scene. Uh, so that was through industry. We can also, I briefly mentioned that it can be through infrastructure, uh, which actually I saw this logo in the DDP exhibition of the, again, the smart city, smart design, smart life. Um, and I, I just added smart infrastructure. So we can start thinking again, how, do, how does, what is smart infrastructure? Um, are we in the, we are in the digital age, uh, for example, how do we get information? How do we distribute information? How does information displayed throughout the city? Uh, if we just, again, stick within the industry of fashion just to uh, localize it, uh, you know, th this is from some online blog that tech savvy Koreans, consumers constantly updating her trends through Instagram and pursuing communities on Pinterest, acquire, acquiring a lot of information there. So we can start thinking, how do we uh, shop? How do we get information? How do we distribute data? All these sort of, sort of conditions, uh, which kind of starts generating ideas in architecture. How do we physically interpret what would be a cloud building, for example, for an industry? Um, so uh, 
Is there a way of turning off the lights or no. dimming the light? Does anyone know the controls of the screen? Just back there. The switches. So, uh, yeah. Well, but basically, this this is the way that we we have been trying to frame the studio and trying to think of it of how do we revamp an industry, how do we inject a new industry, how do we hybridize these industries, uh, what are the new types of infrastructures that we need for a city, uh, which we have categorized into three types of infrastructures: uh, spatial, soft infrastructure, or smart infrastructure. Uh, spatial, we can also say as hard infrastructure, which we generally know as, uh, for example, highways or um, aqueducts, as you mentioned in Hong Kong. These engineered megastructures and engineered um, function-driven um, structures that generate residual spaces and generate uh, all these other conditions. Uh, soft infrastructure is actually programmatic by nature and it's things that get implemented as a system throughout the city. So we can actually think of it in terms of architecture. Um, architecture as a shell, but the infrastructure happens as a program and we can think of it as, for example, uh, public schools, hospitals, uh, government facilities. So are there things that the city needs to operate that are distributed through cities? Uh, smart infrastructure, as well in this new technology era. Uh, how do we collect data? How do we distribute data? Uh, so by kind of looking at how the building can operate with, within all of these modes, we can start creating new concepts of buildings where it's no longer about creating a typology, but also within the rapid prototyping era, maybe it's not uh, typing, but prototyping. Um, so, actually, with with uh, John, you, you John, you briefly mentioned about, uh, for example, the fake industry of uh, fashion. Um, highly trained in the individuals in Korea making uh, almost exact replicas of Louis Vuitton and all these things, which means that by making this fake industry, they have acquired uh, high skill levels. How can we? legitimize this and produce, for example, uh, educational facilities and production facilities to produce something that instead of a fake industry, it becomes its own industry. Uh, so we have it as a fake make uh, building, for example. Um, these are some of the names. Uh, block building, digital bank market, micro factory market, uh, Cape pop up. Uh, brand Park, Soul Concept Store, Market Transformers, Fashion Startups, Fashion Hotel, IT Fashion, uh, Housing Museum, Polarity Market, Theater Market, uh, Heritage Contemporary, which is also that uh, something that we keep on seeing, markets where you get traditional humble and, and through fashion design they revamped it to make what would be a contemporary humble. So all these sort of things, how can we bring again, uh, industry back into the city, production back into the city, micro-production back into the city uh, by conceptualizing all of these sort of uh, prototypes that potentially could be repeated throughout the city, but it could be contextualized right in uh, the Dong Demon area. So, yeah, basically that's the framework of the studio. So as... as uh, Director of the International Sobiano International Studios, I have the privilege of being able to um, not do my presentation because we're so far ahead, uh, behind time. Um, but I, I, what I want to do is just provoke with a series of, of diagrams. I'm going to cut the head off my presentation. I'm going to take the brains out and just show you the the beauty. No, not something like this. So let, let's just pro let's just go through some provocations. I'm not actually going to do my full presentation. Uh, uh, we're collecting data. Uh, it, it's it's pretty impressive actually. Um, the the amount of of uh, money that the fas fashion industry is bringing, um, and it's what's what's interesting is that uh, people are buying a lot of uh, uh, products from the domestic. Um, Ra and so the super brands aren't doing as well as we're thinking. This is the amount of tourists that are coming in. 
there were 11 million t tourists to Seoul last year. Seven million visited our site. Uh, in 2005, that was only two and one billion, one million. Projected, it's, it's going up like this. Um, the amount of waste produced in, in our area is phenomenal compared to the rest of Seoul. It's the highest. 3.9 kilograms per person per day is being produced. What, what, what's, what's going on with this? But also, we're, we're actually recycling the most in our area, of course, because there's so many things. Plastic is a criminal, though. Uh, plastic is not being as recycled as much as we should. Um, there are, uh, what is this one? The top one is interesting because nobody, basically, um, no, people are, oh, people are living where they're working, much higher. Uh, there's more residential where they're working, uh, but, but somehow there's tons of cars on our site, many car ownerships. Um, there is, uh, uh, this is, there's a lot of things here, but what's interesting is that 92% of the factories in Seoul uh, have 10 people or less. So that's really microproduction. This thing is actually uh, much greater. The, uh, the aggregation is much greater than these kind of um, bigger factories. The average age though, which is it's interesting is that um, the number of factory workers is decreasing tremendously. Uh, but, uh, and we're wondering about that, but we're also seeing that the, the uh, skills are not being handed down. So the average age is 54.2 um, of, of the, the uh, factory workers. Of course, there's a big gender difference. These are going up a lot. Clothing factories, uh, printing metals are going up. These are actually are going down. Uh, and just uh, just as an example, uh, just to give some background from the student research, uh, we're looking at Tonggecheng, which is the the city government's website for data, and it's just you know a bunch of spreadsheets. It, it's really impossible to read. But so we're graphi graphicalizing the information. It's really fascinating. There's so much information that the city has made public, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. What's what's interesting is um, these are all the the districts of Seoul, the Ku. So it has a really high daytime population, but the lowest. So there's a 348 percent difference between the day and night population. What's interesting about the volume of traffic around the site, um, the the city has also tracked done some research, is that most of the people moving through our site are going from ins educational institutions. We don't know why. We thought it was going to be working. We thought it was going to be shopping. But educational institutions, uh, people traversing for those reasons, are going through our site. What's interesting, though, in this mapping is there's, there's no um, hagwans. There's no um, educational facilities in our site. There's so many around our site. So the presumption is that they're moving through our site in some way from education institution to education institution. There's a lot of leverage we can get from this. Um, the, the mappings, how do we begin to untangle this? What's fascinating is that the urban renewal has brought these intense streets, right? That they're, that they're almost hard to cross. What that has created are these um, alleyways. These alleyways, only two-wheeled two -wheel uh, two vehicles or pedestrians can go into these alleyways. Uh, and, and they're actually become the, these kind of islands. What that means is that there's a lot of dead ends, and these are buildings only reachable by the dead ends. So these islands have created, whether that's good or bad, it's up to the to students to decide. What's interesting is that now 30% of the buildings are only accessible by pedestrian or by two-wheeled vehicles. You cannot get to these buildings. I think that's a huge amount. Um, uh, the program is clustered. But it's fuzzy, too. So there's printing, uh, there's food, there's shopping. And it's interesting. It's not as it, it, we thought it was going to be more radically mixed, but it actually begins to aggregate and cluster. Uh, but then if you over, we're starting to overlay the maps. These are the alleyways. Um, so these are just quick site responses, new ways of distribution. Um, how do we actually use all the motorcycles that, that was mentioned before, but bring in drones so that actually we can begin to connect to the hyper-local, but also to the nationwide scale. Um, there's also waterways that are going to be revitalized that go into the Changgechan. These are ancient waterways. So what does that bring in terms of, you know, we're, we're naming our projects with verbs. This is the agriculturing hub. So what is urban agriculture? Um, we're also talking about information and, and, sh and how should we firewall it and uh, mass customization.
So yeah, I won't actually go into these projects. That was my the lecture part. So I just want to actually compel you with some of this this fascinating data. Thank you.